Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and finally we are done with all the boring stuff, all the theory stuff. We've discussed about the Kubernetes uh, primitives and now let's just move to some fun part. So in today's video, we are going to talk about pods. So pods are actually very interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are pods? Uh, if you just Google it, if you, I mean, if you look into Kubernetes document, if you just do a simple Google search, you will see that pod is the smallest deployable unit a compute unit in kubernetes but why i mean have you ever thought why pod is the smallest deployable unit why not containers because i mean at the end of the day what you're running inside a kubernetes cluster is containers right and pod is nothing it's just a collection of containers i mean ideally you should run just one container inside a pod i mean that's what you would find on the internet but maybe suppose, I mean, I want to run say three containers inside a pod and we will do that when we'll talk about multi-container pods, we will actually do that. But then why pod is the smallest unit of deployment and not container? So I'll tell you the reason this is actually a very good interview question. So that's because all the containers running inside a pod actually share the names, uh, network namespace and the storage namespace. So within a pod, all the containers, they can access each other. They can actually reach out to each other on localhost. So that's the reason the pod is actually the smallest unit and not the containers. So the containers don't get a separate IP address. It's the pod that gets the IP address. All right. So yeah, that's the reason. So now what I'm going to show you in this video, actually, so we'll cover a few points like how to run a pod uh, using imperative command and YAML manifest files. We'll talk a little bit, a little bit about static pods, uh, but we'll go in details by creating static pods in the upcoming videos. We'll not do that in this video. And then I'll talk about uh, pod lifecycle. So that we'll do. And the interesting stuff would come in the next video when we'll talk about the pod networking. So that is actually very interesting. And yeah, so that's it for this video and uh, the next video. So now, now let's just uh, continue. So how to run a pod. So uh, like I told you for, I mean, the upcoming videos, I'll have created a new uh, Kubernetes cluster with three nodes. So, so if I do kubectl get nodes, you can see that we have a master node, kube master and two worker nodes because uh, going forward, we'll actually see a lot of, I told you about paints and toleration, node affinity, how to run uh, scheduling. We'll see a lot of that in scheduling. So that is why I have a cluster with three node, uh, three node cluster, right? And you can see the version of Kubernetes. So it's the latest version 19.4. Uh, so yeah, so first thing, how to run a pod using imperative command. That is actually very simple. Just do kubectl run. Uh, let's say I want to run my pod. So that's the name that you can actually give any name. And then you need to give the image. So an image. And let's say I want to run an nginx pod. Sorry, nginx. And you can see it says pod created. Now let's just do kubectl get pods. So I haven't given it any namespace. So it would create the pod in the default namespace. So you can see it says container creating. So let's just wait for this. All right, so you can see the state has changed from container creating to running and that because that I mean, it, take, it takes some time initially because it actually pulls the Nginx image from Docker Hub. So that's why it took some time to actually get this pod running. So this is actually how you create the pod using imperative command, right? Very simple. Now, what if I want to do the same thing, say using a busy box, right? Uh, sorry, uh, YAML uh, manifest file. So let's just get rid of this pod first kubectl delete pod and my pod. So this is going to delete my pod. So this actually does the graceful delete. I would show you a way in which you can actually do a forceful delete also. So it would delete the pod immediately. All right. So pod is deleted. Let's do kubectl get pods. 
you can see there's no pod running now we'll run the same command which we ran kubectl run uh, my pod hyphen hyphen image equal to nginx and now we'll pass a couple of parameters first is dry run so i don't actually want to run this and then i want the output in yaml format and i'll pass store this uh, in say nginx.yaml all right so if i cad the file nginx.yaml you can see that kubernetes has actually created me a yaml manifest file so let's just go inside this and we can get rid of few things which we don't need like the creation timestamp so we can get rid of this we don't need any labels as of now let's get rid of that as well name we need it image we need it uh, you can see uh, kubernetes actually names the container with the same name as pod so if you want you can change that but i uh, will leave it as is resources we don't need it dns policy we don't need restart policy we don't need and status we don't need so this is the basic yaml file that you need to create a pod now let's save this and the way to create the pod let me clear the screen and to do this we'll do kubectl apply hyphen f and nginx.yaml and this should create the pod quickly because we already have the image so it shouldn't be pulling the image anymore so if i do kubectl get pods so it's still container creating maybe it will take some time so i'll pause the video and see in how much time does it create this time all right so you can see it created the pod in 25 seconds so i think the last time it took around 112 seconds uh, for, but this time it did it in 25 seconds because we already had the image right so that that's the reason all right so this is about creating pods using imperative commands and manifest file we'll be going in a lot of details when we'll actually because you would never run uh, an isolated pod in kubernetes you would actually run it as a part of a deployment a replica set and something like that 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 would actually run your application so we'll look into these commands in more detail when we'll talk about deployments replica sets daemon sets and things like that right all right so now uh, let's talk about static pods so static pods are actually the pods which uh, you create on worker node directly uh, with which are not actually managed i mean they're managed by the kubernetes like uh, master node but they are not created by say i mean these yaml files right so something you like i mean you can think of them as they're managed directly by the kubelet running on the worker node instead of being managed by the control plane right so if i go on to say ssh into my worker one let me see if i will be able to ssh using the root or okay so i won't be able to go directly into my worker so i'll ssh into my worker node and then show you what exactly i mean all right so now i am in my worker one uh, so let's do a simple ps command and find our kubelet process so kubelet oh sorry i need to do grep sorry so grep all right so it will show you now what i'm looking for is the config file which is this file where lib kubelet config.yaml and if i do a cat on this and down below you would see static pod path so the path is etc kubernetes manifest so let's go inside this we clear the screen and let's cd into etc kubernetes manifests and do an ls hyphen lrt So you can see there are no files uh, at this moment uh, in here so if i want to create a static pod i can just put a simple yaml file in here 
and the kubelet will automatically pick it up and create a pod for me. So we will not be doing that in this video. We will do this when we will talk about static pods in the upcoming video. All right. So I'll show you how you actually create the static pods. But I just wanted to tell you that there is there are different kinds of pod and static pod is one of them. All right, back to the master. So now we'll talk about uh, uh, our life cycle of a pod. So pod life cycle is, I mean, very simple. It has uh, four stages, I think. Uh, one is starting, the other is, uh, yeah, so the other is, I think, uh, running, and then you have a succeeded one, uh, uh, I mean, one state, and the other, I mean, if the pod doesn't succeed, the, the, the other state is actually failed. So there are basically three states. Uh, the first one is pending or starting. The second one is uh, running. So if, if you have a pod which actually runs as a daemon, so you would see like we did for the Nginx pod, you, would, you saw that the state was running. Uh, then there's the third stage or the final stage, which is either succeed or fail. So if the pod completes whatever it was, it meant, I mean, it was meant to do, uh, then the stage is succeed. Otherwise, the stage is for, uh, failed, right? So let's create a pod which actually completes itself and then we'll see what, what its state is, right? So let's quickly do a kubectl run and we'll run, say, sleep pod, right? We'll give it an image. So we'll just run a busy box image, which is actually very light. All right. And I would pass another uh, property on the flag, which is restart. And I'll set it to never. Otherwise, it will keep restarting once this uh, pod actually completes whatever it was meant to do. It will keep restarting it. So we don't want that. And then I'm going to run a command. The command would be sleep for say 30 seconds so i want it to sleep for 30 seconds all right so now just let's run this pod and you can see the pod is created and if i do kubectl or do a describe on pod sleep pod and come up over here you can see the status is actually running. So it went from point pending to running pretty quickly. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a watch on kubectl get pods, All right? So you can see the state of my, this pod is running. So we'll just wait for 30 seconds and see what its state become once those 30 seconds are over. So you can see they're already over. The state is now changed to completed. Let's just exit out of it and do a describe again on that pod. Come up over here. So state is terminated. You can see the reason is being because it's complete and the status over here, it says succeeded. So this pod actually, it succeeded. So it's status changed from running to succeeded. So the life cycle of the pod is pending, uh, running, and succeeded or failed. So basically three, I mean, you normally have three, right? It is either uh, succeeded or failed. All right, so yeah, this is it for this video, guys. This is all I wanted to show you. Uh, we'll talk a lot about pods. I mean, throughout the course or throughout the this course, we would be talking about pods because pod is like I told you, is the unit of deployment and it's the smallest unit of deployment, right? So it's a very important part of uh, Kubernetes cluster, you, I mean, you build anything, you build a deployment, you run a daemon set, you run a replica set, whatever you run, you are actually running pods inside those, those right? So we'll see a lot of pods uh, during this course. But for this video, I think this is it. Please do subscribe to the channel before leaving. If you have any questions, just put there those questions in comment and I will get back to you uh, as soon as I can. And please do subscribe to the channel before leaving. And thank you for watching.